Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Harvest Horror Fest. All right, everybody, are you ready for Hellraiser for this episode of the Real Film Nerds podcast? Number 293. Matt, I, I think uh, I think you're ready. I am not ready, Mike. This movie is hell. Come on, man. What was the voice that you just did right before the pod? It was hell. Hellraiser nice. 2022. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I think you need to audition for one of Frank's uh, metal bands. Mashuga. Nice, nice, Matt. That that was that was that was good. Good intro, Matt. So, welcome, fellow nerdarinos. Uh, this is episode number two of the Halloween Horror Fest. Oh, you even screwed up your own event, Mike. Damn. Wow. <laughs> take a drink, everybody. Take a drink. Harvest. Dang it. Uh. The fifth annual Harvest Horror Fest. Brought to you by the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Woo! Yeah, yeah. So, man, I, I think I was thinking about it too much. Anyway. Yeah, I, see, I told you, whenever I say shit, you think too much and then it screws everything up. Mike, stop thinking. Okay, I'll, I'll try on that. I'll try. I'll, tr- I'll work on that, Matt. I'll work on it. You're too smart for your own good. I don't know if that's good or bad. I guess it's bad. Mm, no. Uh, so, like I said uh, before, we're talking about Hellraiser. This is a reimagining of the Clive Barker classic. Do you want to give us the rundown, Matt? Sure, Mike. So, is that what we're going by? We're going by a reimagining, not a reboot, not a replay, not a rescore, not a retard. Oh, wait. You're not supposed to say that word. No, no. That's been canceled. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, again, no, I send all I... your complaints. Mike at realfilmnurse.com. Oh, thanks, Matt. Uh, I don't know if you would call... I, I don't know. I just saw something about a reimagining. I think it was on the description on uh, the Hulu website. Okay, well, we will stick with reimagining. Uh, Mike, I forgot I'm doing the rundown, so uh, I will probably screw a lot of this up as far as words of people's names, but here we go. Hellraiser 2022 is directed by David Bruckner. It is written by Ben Collins, Luke Petrowski, David S. Goyer, and it stars, let me scroll down so I get more than two people, it stars Odessa Azion, Jamie Clayton, Adam Faison, Drew Starkey, Brandon Flynn, I'm not going to say her name. And Jason Lyles. And here we go. Here's a little description of what the uh, film is. A take on Clive Barker's 1987 horror classic where a young woman struggling with addiction comes into possession of an ancient puzzle box, unaware that its purpose is to summon the Cenobites. All right, man. You did a good job for just, uh, you know, me throwing that out there. No, I just forgot. I should have remembered that we reverse it for Halloween. I mean, Harvest Horror Fest. Man, I was just thinking about our. <laughs> uh, I was just th- thinking about uh, Halloween Horror Nights, and I, I just I get confused. I'm sorry. I know. I'm just giving you shit, Mike, because it's fun. It's fun. It's just funny because it's you're the one that decided to do Harvest instead of Halloween or anything else, and Lisa even gets it wrong. She called it the Horror Harvest Fest. I'm like, we are harvesting a lot of horror. <laughs> yeah, Matt. So uh, speaking of that, w- what did you think? Uh, what are your first impressions of this uh, reimagining, retake, retelling, reboot? You ready to hate me, Mike? Uh, I'd, sure, I'm ready. I was bored. I didn't think it was very good. Okay. Um, I miss the leather and chains. They had some chains. But I missed the leather. I missed the gore. There just wasn't as much gore in this. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the Hellraiser series in general, but uh, the original is a classic horror film. It's been referenced for 
generations. You know, there's always some kind of spoof of Hellraiser in something all, you know, Family Guy's done it, Simpsons have done it, South Park, everyone has done something. I mean, even our beloved Cabin in the Woods has a call out to Hellraiser, you know? It's just a classic horror film. And I'll be honest, man, I, I was bored. I, I wish it was better. I really didn't feel much for the main characters. I really didn't care when people were starting to get slaughtered. Um, their acting was terrible. Uh, I think the Cenobites were pretty awesome, especially their makeup and how they look and everything, but I'd still miss the leather. I thought it was interesting what they did using the skin and everything, but it looked bad. It looked really plasticky. Well, I, I think it looked... Uh, I, I mean, talking about the skin and instead of the leather, I think it looked cool when it was dark and like low lighting, but when they got towards the end and you saw like full lit things, it definitely looked a little bit weird. Like it was latex over some normal part of the body, right? So like, I don't know, it was a little bit harder to, I mean, it was still pretty darn good, like all that stuff um, in the movie. But yeah, this movie just didn't have the, uh, I don't know, the, the horror feels really, man. Like the, it had blood. It didn't, I don't think there was, there was no boobs. Nope. Nope. It had no boobies. And uh, I, the, the Cenobites, there's a lot of beast. But, uh, so, like, on the three Bs, it only had two out of three. And I don't know, man. I feel like they tried to do too much, like, like, uh, the plot wasn't very straightforward. Like, we didn't know anything about the the beginning character, and then it jumps into this other character. Like, I, I don't know. It, and it's two hours. It just seems like it was wasted. Like, they just didn't set the story up Matt you know it we was, always talk about that it was very freaking long dude it was very long um it was just boring but to go back on the uh outfits I, when it worked it was really good I like the idea of use, using the skin versus leather it definitely gives you a little bit more of the uh torture aspect which is what they're trying to go for um but it's just I wish they would have done a little bit more to make it look a little bit more realistic, but obviously they did do it practically, which is, I applaud them for doing a practical effect. I like that. But uh, yeah, Mike, the biggest issue with this film is the, not the acting on the Cenobites. I think they all did fantastic. The uh, uh, young lady who played the uh, priest or AKA Hellraiser, uh, wonderful. I, I, I have no qualms with her. I thought she did a very, very good job as the new pinhead or Hellraiser or um, priest, whichever you refer to him. He has three different names or she. Uh, I thought she was wonderful. I really liked her as the leader of the Cenobites. But the main characters, I just was like, eh, whatever. Your acting's not very good. I'm not really enthralled with the story. I understand the addiction and all that stuff. It just... It wasn't very good. Yeah, I feel like there's too many twists and turns, and and our main character, it was like there was nothing. I, I don't know. Like I felt like they were trying to throw stuff at us to to get her to like to, to get us to like her, and it's like well, why? I don't know. She's just seems like I don't know. Seems like she's messing up everything and she's not being truthful with her roommates and brother or whatever. And I don't know. There's just, there were aspects that were told about the characters. It was just, I, I don't know. It just didn't seem, didn't flow well. No, I, I agree. And it, you don't, I, I don't want to make it sound bad that ad addiction people and stuff like that you shouldn't care for, but. But sh these characters, I really just didn't care about. The only one that I'm not going to say spoilers who died and who didn't or whatever, but the only one I really cared about was probably her brother because he was trying so hard to help her out and she just kept screwing him over left and right. The roommate was kind of an ass. Um, her boyfriend was definitely an ass. I really didn't like him. So, you know, when people started 
no longer being on this plane of existence, uh, I didn't really care. And in a horror movie where it's, you know, like this, where you're picking people off one by one, you got to care about the characters that are getting taken out or it doesn't succeed. Yeah, that's true, man. It's very true. Um, so I guess when you were watching this, Matt, did you get a chance to drink one of those nice fall beers? Of course, Mike. Are you, are you asking me a question informally? Y- yes. Uh, I, I'm wondering what, what kind of beer are you drinking this, this evening uh, right now? <sighs> well, Mike, thank you for asking, kind sir. I am drinking my favorite because I have I stocked up. I bought two 12-packs, uh, and I'm going to drink them all Harvest Horror Fest. Uh, Sam Adams Oktoberfest. Love it. Awesome, dude. Awesome. Yeah, it's been running in short supply in my neck of the woods. I haven't seen it uh, on the shelves anymore. I'm not sure if they sold it all or what's going on, but uh, I did, or I do still have some of those uh, pumpkin beers. So I had one of those pumpkin spice lattes from Left Hand Brewing. It was pretty tasty. Gross. Ew. Shout out to your uh, cousin, Eric, though, uh, avid listener of the Real Film Nerds podcast. He texted me a photo of a display, and it was all Oktoberfest. I was like, dude, if I needed some, I'd be driving to Tucson right now. <laughs> he had a full display. I was like, oh, lucky. Because, yeah, I, I'll go into, like, most places, chains, I guess, or um, just even normal bars around here typically have a keg of Sam Adams Oktoberfest. It's all gone. Like, Chili's is out. Uh, Applebee's is out. A bunch of other restaurants are already out. They don't have any more Oktoberfest. Oh, man. Did they already switch switch over to the winter lager? No, they just don't have any more Oktoberfest. They just have regular Sam Adams right now. Interesting. Huh. Maybe they made less of it or something this year, or maybe it's being bought up in other areas more or something. Who knows? I don't know, but I got I. it cost me a pretty penny because I bought it at, a peak, at its peak before they put it on sale. Uh, I got two 12s, and they're sitting there in my kitchen ready to go in the fridge when I go through the 12 that I currently have. All right, man. That sounds good. All right, Mike. Well, I think I should ask the most important question of the podcast, at least for you. Mike, what is today's absolutely hell-raising dad joke? I got dad jokes. I don't think they understand, though. Gotta think I'm funny. Other people never laugh, though. Dad jokes. Oh, dude, you're gonna you're gonna die with this one. This one's great. Please, I hope. What do you call it when Batman skips out on church? When Batman skips out on church, um, I was gonna say something about a rotten egg, but that's the Christmas song. I don't know, Mike. Christian Bale. Ha! That's pretty good. All right, I'll give it to you. That's a good one, Christian Bale. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's probably the first one I truly actually like. <laughs> Uh, there we go there we go i found one finally found one matt mike you succeed you win so that means we're on to the marvel cinematic universe mike how does the 2022 hellraiser relate to the marvel cinematic universe All right, Matt, Uh, for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the editor for this movie, uh, David Marks, also was an assistant editor on Spider-Man Far From Home. Nice. Good job, Mike. Good job. So for our lucky listeners out there, before we roll into our spoiler section, I know I'm kind of hijacking the lead on the pod, even though it's Mike's. But uh, this is where my segment comes in. Um, it's happening more and more every week. But Micah, we have another giveaway this week. All right, man. What do we got? Have you ever heard of the uh, young man? He's a comedian. He's been tearing it up the past, I don't know, five or six years, really exploding on scene, and he's starting to break into movies and TV. His name is Joe Coy. I have heard of him. Uh, I think there's a couple Netflix specials. 
he has several Netflix specials. He even talks about his Netflix specials um, because he couldn't get any traction and going. He went and paid to have his very first one filmed on his own, and then he shopped it around, and Netflix is the one that picked it up. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. But anyway, so Joe Coy came out with a film not long ago. My parents actually went and saw it in the theaters, and they really enjoyed it. They thought it was absolutely wonderful, hilarious. Um, It's a family comedy. It goes by the name of Easter Sunday. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing that. I was a little bit interested in going to watch it, but I don't know what was going on. I, for whatever reason, wasn't able to make it. Probably had another movie to watch for the pod. Probably. But, Mike, so you can not enter our contest to win a copy of Easter Sunday, but the rest of you are wonderful listeners. Mike, um, I hate to put you on the spot, but what should they do this week to enter our drawing to win a copy of Easter Sunday, the movie? Oh, uh, let's just make this easy on our listeners, Matt. Let's uh, let's just ask them to find out how many... Uh joe coy uh specials are listed on netflix and you can just find that yeah yeah nice that's a good one that's a good one i like that mike i like that a lot so okay like we always have to do or choose to do because we like to help out uh especially those that give to us we like to give back so here's our little plug for easter sunday Home is where the crazy is in stand-up comedy sensation Joe Coy's cinematic debut, Easter Sunday. The hilarious and heartfelt comedy co-stars Jimmy O. Yang, Tia Carrera, and Tiffany Haddish and is yours to own with never-before-seen extras, including hilarious deleted scenes and a gang grill. You can own it today on digital, or you can wait until October 18th and buy it on Blu-ray, Easter Sunday is rated PG-13, and it's from Universal Pictures Home Entertainment. Got it all out. All right, there we go. So for those of you who are interested, want to be entered in our drawing to get a copy of Easter Sunday, go ahead and shoot me or Mike an email. Um, You can email me at matt at realfilmnerds.com or nerds at realfilmnerds.com or mike at realfilmnerds.com. All righty, Mike, it is your show. Uh, Sorry for hijacking it, but, dude, it's awesome that we got another giveaway, and this time from Universal, so that's pretty sweet. Dude, that is sweet, and uh, I I look forward to hearing from our our listeners about that. Um, Sounds like a fun one, Matt. Maybe one of these days we'll get a chance to watch it. I don't know, Mike. Maybe we'll have to rent it. (laughs) Yeah, we might have to. Um, Matt, so with this movie... One thing that a horror movie, you know, kind of should do is at least be like scary, right? Whether it's jump scares or, or scary. This wasn't really scary. I mean, it's got some creepy looking, you know, Cenobites, but were, were you scared at all? Not really. I think the, if I had any level of what you would call a scare, it was more about the pain of the things that the Cenobites were doing. FYI, we're in spoilers, by the way, people. Um, like, you know, the peeling of skin and the, you know, throwing the, the hooks with the chains and stuff. Like, I don't know if you would call that scary. It's more like, oh, my gosh, that would be incredibly, incredibly painful. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of Hellraiser stuff was about was to be to highlight how how they bring pain and and, and various things. And I guess it kind of did. I don't know. I don't know. This movie was just, it was just okay. Mike, how much do you know about the Cenobites? Uh, not a ton, Matt. Not a ton. What do you What do you know about the Cenobites? I don't know. That's what I was going to ask you. Oh, so, okay. So, okay, the film is called Hellraiser. So are the Cenobites from hell? I know they're from another dimension, but they are, are they like from a, a different plane where they're aliens? Is it like a sci-fi twist? Because you never really hear them use the words demonic or Satan or devil or anything like that. So are they just from another, are they just aliens? I don't know. I think all I know is it's it's some supposed to be ancient and that they enjoy uh, bringing pain to uh, people uh, that have 
messed with the box, Pandora's box. Well, I don't even think of. it's so much that they bring pain. From my understanding is the Cenobites don't differentiate between pleasure and pain. They're the same feeling to them. And so when they administer pain, it's like giving them, the people that they're torturing, pleasure in uh, their heads. At least that's what I understand. Okay. I I don't know, man. I don't know. And then, you know, you got the puzzle box with all the different levels of Cenobites. Uh, and, you know, it designed to, you know, stab the person and draw blood. And the instant the blood hits the... Uh, the box, that's it. You're SOL, man. You're the next one on the chopping block. Yep. Yep. For sure. One thing I found interesting, too, is so the one that I felt bad about was the brother because he didn't do shit. He was trying to help her. He was trying to help everyone. And he got, he was the first one. He got screwed hard. And then, oh, yeah. The, the Cenobite uh, priestess, she talks about how glorious and wonderful his death was, but you never see it on screen. Like you don't see any of the people's deaths on screen except for the weird billionaire guy at the end. But I don't even know if that's a death and we can talk about that later, but you never see like their death. You just see them go into the other plane of existence and disappear. Now, granted they're being, pulled by chains or their skins being peeled off or whatever as they're going into that other plane but you never see them fulfill their death or their i don't even think they called it death they called it elevation or something i don't know yeah you're right matt you don't ever see them i guess it's well do you think it was like probably like a creative choice yeah but the one the one uh i don't know i, I guess it was dark the in the van with the the girl or whatever and and they're trying to drive away and yeah but she gets pulled into the other plane through the floor and all you see is blood in the back of the van okay you all know right. like she doesn't you don't even see now granted they go a little bit farther on the torturing and body pain i i don't know what to say but yeah they go farther on that one than just about all of them except for the end which we'll get to in a minute. But like her brother, like you don't see it. You just basically see him get hit by chains and get pulled over. And the the chick that was in the um, nursing home, uh, assisted living because she was dying, you don't really see much with her. It's just, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was like a whole wasted character, man. Like she was awesome. Like could have done so much more with her. It's just, it's a strange one, man. It's a strange one and... I just I'm not a huge fan of Hellraiser to begin with, but that doesn't have anything to do with my rating. The film itself was just not great. Uh, I'll be honest, it just was not. No, it wasn't. But Matt, uh, did you know with this movie, this is the final re reboot of all the uh, Golden Age slasher movies from the 70s and 80s. Uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, they redid in 2003. Uh, Michael Myers of Halloween in 2007, and then I guess again in 2018. Uh, Jason Voorhees of uh, Friday 13th in 2009. Freddy Krueger of Nightmare on Elm Street in 2010. And Chucky of Child's Play in 2019. And now Pinhead in 2022. Did you see that there's a Chucky TV show on Sci-Fi now? I did see that. I think I saw an advertisement or something for that. Yeah, I'm not sure when it comes out, but I saw an ad for it. So you would consider those films the golden films of horror from the 70s and 80s? Uh, golden Age of Slashers. Golden Age uh, of Slashers. I, I, okay. So, yeah. yeah, I know Slashers are a particular type of horror film, um, but you're the horror, horror aficionado, so... I can't think of any other big ones other than those as well. Maybe, I mean, Jaws, but that's not really... A slasher. Yeah, no, I was trying to think of if there was anyone they missed, and no, it's like uh, just been these movies over and over again. Well, what about Candyman? They redid Candyman, too. They did redo Candyman, just re and we, we reviewed it. Yeah, I don't know. Is Candyman a slasher? Would you call it a slasher? I, I would put it in so, there. So I, I don't know. That's That's where it's a little bit fuzzy, right? Like, because then, then you start, like... There's like 
other movies that could, uh, I don't know. Well, Mike, you're the horror pro. I'm the horror pro. You're the horror pro. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I would call Candyman a slasher. It's like a mythical kind of thing with the mirror stuff. But, eh, you know, that's fine. Whatever. Yeah, it's the, um, not not mythical, the, it's the um, uh, urban legend is what they call that. Urban legend. Oh, uh, yeah. Urban legend. Oh, and then speaking of like slasher movies, Scream, uh, which came out in like 2001, I think. No. It, the original, I think, was in the 90s, wasn't it? Like 99, 2000? Was it 99? I think we were it, still in high school when it came out. It's it's they they like already kind of re- oh ninety six oh hell so yeah <laughs> so uh, Sc- scream came out in ninety six and then they've already kind of redone it with like or I mean it, I guess it was like another sequel but they had one in twenty twenty two which I watched yeah but didn't the original writer and director do it so is it really a reboot uh, well no the. Uh, Director was Wes Craven. He he's dead. Oh shit! Really? Oh yeah. 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 He he passed away in 2015. Where the hell was I? I don't know, dude. Not paying attention, obviously. Working. Yeah, probably working. <laughs> you're always working, man. Always you're working, man. Yes, sir. I am. I learned it from you. I learned it from watching you, Mike. Oh, well, you must have been watching far away because I don't work that hard. Just don't look for the cameras. Oh, man. <laughs> have I been living the, uh, oh, what was that movie with uh, Jim Carrey? That cuts it down. <laughs> the movie with Jim Carrey. <laughs> where where they're watching him, like, grow up and stuff, and then he finds Truman out. Truman Show. Yeah, yeah, Truman Show. Yeah, that, you, that show's awesome. Did you Truman Show me? Just your bathroom. Oh. <laughs> okay. Just the toilet? Yep. Yep. It's my favorite part. Ugh. <laughs> All right. This is going down a dark path. Dark, dark path. Um, yeah, man. This is going down the toilet. Down the shitter. Yeah. <laughs> it's swirling the shitter. <laughs> okay, Matt. Back back on the horror movies, man. Um, yes, sir. Let, let's, let's talk about this... Uh, the ending of this movie, okay. which was like, yeah, he they um, they gave him the Leviathan treatment, and so you see, literally parts of him being peeled back, and I mean it's it's pretty gruesome. My question though, is this: it it clearly feels like they're going to do a Hellraiser two, and it seems like the rich millionaire guy, his release or reward or whatever um he is now a cenobite that's just my perception is he's the leviathan cenobite that's kind of what it seemed like uh to me as well man and it did seem like they were setting up for a sequel but why I, I, money i don't know i don't know I'm not sure how well uh, this was streamed. I don't think I've seen anything. Usually they release some sort of streaming metrics are weird anyway. I think they measure the minutes that it's viewed. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, th- and something like that, yeah. Or downloads, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's minutes viewed and like with something like Stranger Things on Netflix, the the most recent series, it was like billions of minutes viewed in like a first week or something it's ridiculous but mike uh my opinion on this one uh pass don't waste your time watching it it's not worth it uh yeah man i I, i'm afraid i agree with you i i was i I picked this movie looking forward to i thought it'd be something great and i don't know man out of all the remakes that i just listed off of the golden age i didn't like any of them I haven't seen most of them. Like, I didn't even know Friday the 13th. Well, no, you told me about the Friday the 13th one. Nightmare on Elm Street is the one that I didn't even know they did. Yeah, they redid that one. And then, uh, let's see. Um, I haven't seen the Scream one. I've watched the Hellraiser one. 
and what was the other one um halloween i've watched halloween yeah well that was the i think that was the rob zombie halloween version Uh, yeah because they've redone halloween like what two or three times well this is the third incantation of it and actually why don't you talk about that mike yeah that's gonna be our movie next week uh halloween ends the trilogy or quadril what how do you say quadrilogy quadrilogy because it's kind of like a continuation of the first movie to the 2018 release and then the 2021 release and then now the 2022 release yeah because they never said that the most recent halloween films are reboots because they're not they're very different um they're a continuation of the story of the original now the rob zombie one i think was a reboot and wasn't there another one or no that was h2o that wasn't no, a no no so h2o wasn't a, a reboot although it did have jamie lee curtis in it right uh the uh let's see remember matt we actually saw that we theater did. at the r&m r&m dude. cinema in the big theater yep yeah, and they played cartoons before because the movie like had a running length of like eighty minutes. Yep, I remember. I remember. That was fun. Movie wasn't, yeah, dude, but no, the movie was awful. But uh, at least uh, it was. It, it's an experience we can talk about now. Yeah, the experience was fun. There was a lot of people there. We saw it on a Friday night. We saw it opening weekend on a Friday night, and it was packed. And yeah, honestly, man, sitting in a dark room with that many people, everybody cheering and booing and whatever like that's we've talked about it a lot but that's that's the experience and i i'm lucky i got that experience at the prescott film festival it was wonderful it was really good i saw five or four or five films and yeah we talked i talked about it last week but it was awesome that and that's why they do stuff like that it's it's more about the the communal watching of a film and then talking about it afterwards yeah those those uh, that would be fun man um I'm uh, sorry I couldn't uh, make it out there. Well, and this is what we uh, try and do, you know, with our podcast. We watch a movie and we try to recreate that uh, chatting after the film about it. And if it was good, if it was crap, if we, you know, get into deep thought, but hopefully not too deep, especially not for Hellraiser 2022. (laughs) No, 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 it was... Not uh, not that great. So, Matt, I guess I'll ask you, what is your rating then of this movie? Uh, Mike, I'm probably being really generous here just because uh, it's who I am. I'm a giver. I'm a lover. You know you know me. Um, I give Hellraiser 2 out of five reels. Wow. All right. Well, uh, I also am in the twos, but I'm, I'm going to go a little bit higher. Uh, I, I'll give it a two and a half out of, out of five. Well, you do like your horror movies, Mike. So, you know, um, I just, Hellraiser's just not my thing. Just isn't. Some people love it, especially, uh, hardcore horror people. Like Hellraiser's one of their favorites. Like is Hellraiser one of your favorite horror films, Mike? No, I think, oh uh, man, I, I was trying to think of what, what some of my favorite ones are. I don't know, man. I, I think the thing is is one of my favorites um the 1982 the thing uh i don't know man there's there's quite a few movies that i'm just and like i know jaws is considered a horror movie but i don't consider it a horror movie yeah not not Uh, your thought of traditional horror no no um so I, I don't know, man. It's 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 tough. It's tough. There's a lot of really good horror movies, like Event Horizon. I really like. Dude, that is a very good movie. That was we did that, and I think, um, gosh, uh, what was the other one you were talking about? Cabin in the Woods. No, no, uh, definitely Cabin in the Woods. We did that. Oh, the thing. The thing. We did uh, Event Horizon, and I think the thing our first uh, Harvest Horror Fest, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, I think it's because it's some of my favorite. I mean, even the original Halloween is great. Oh yeah, the it's original Halloween movie. is one of my favorite horror films of all time because it's it's scary as shit. It really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just watched the um, movies that made us on Halloween. Oh, did you get actually, through that? Matt. Yeah, I haven't watched that yet. It's is great, man. I'm still. The, they spent 
I'm still in Christmas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, they spent uh, they spent half of their budget, half, on the camera. Wow. Because that was when a certain Steadicam came out. That would do it. That would do it. Well, I mean, Mike, we've talked about it time and time and time again. It's always the story is always number one, and that's a fantastic story. And the way they shot it was really well. And it's a it's a quality horror movie. It really is. Okay, Matt. Well, um, I think uh, we should uh, remind the listeners about our contest. Oh, okay. So, Mike, you're done. Is it my turn to end end out the podcasto? Uh yeah man I I I think I'm done I, this, this I wish there was more to talk about but this movie was just meh yeah I'm with you so all right well thanks everybody for listening don't forget to enter our contest to win yourself a copy of Easter Sunday go ahead and email us write in tell us how many Netflix specials Joe Coy has and we will put you in a drawing to win a copy. Um, next week we're talking about Halloween ends. Is it really the end though? Are they going to do another Halloween trilogy? My money says yes, but we'll see. So we're heading to the theaters. That's two. You know, that's one nice thing, Mike, we have been doing lately with the Harvest Horror Fest is they're timing the horror movies that are new releases to be in October. And so it's coinciding with our Harvest Horror Fest. So here we get to go to the theaters, you know, next week and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, too. Uh, there really hasn't been that much to watch these last few months. I feel like after summer, there's been such a drought. It's been kind of rough, but there's been some films I've been genuinely intrigued by and wanted to see these past few weeks, and we haven't gone and seen them. And then I hear about them, and they're absolute shit, so I'm kind of glad I didn't waste money in seeing them in the theaters. Now, I'm not going to say which movies those are. I will keep that to myself, but there have been probably about three or four. So, but anyways... um. Again, thanks, thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, go ahead, shoot us those emails to be put in for our drawing. Um, yeah, uh, no radio, at least not as of right now, because of a holiday week. I got to go on Wednesday. So if you're listening to this after Wednesday, you probably will hear the radio interview here in a little bit. But uh, yeah, once again, thanks, everybody, for listening. Go out, watch a movie, stream a movie. Uh, enjoy this wonderful, wonderful thing we call a hobby, I guess, watching film. Um, yeah, and tune in next week when we watch and chat about Halloween ends. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now go out and catch a movie. Let me turn on your mic. What kind of a project? <laughs> is my pro- is my mic We're working recording. this time? We're live. Is it working this Matt time? Matt Henshaw in studio with me this morning on Magic 99.1. This is why you'll never make it in radio, Matt. I'm too pretty. When somebody says stand by, that means don't talk. Oh. <laughs> well, you need to hold up a flag or a sign or something. There you go. Okay, next time. We're going to talk about the movie Hellraiser this morning. Tell me, what would you think? It was boring. Oh, really? With a name like Hellraiser, the last thing you can be is boring. Well, it's a it's a reboot of the original from 1987. Okay. And it does not live up to its namesake. No. Oh, my gosh. And you said you didn't go to the movies to see this. It no, was streaming? It's on Hulu. It's a Hulu exclusive or Hulu original or whatever they call it. Okay. Yeah. And it came out on Friday. All right. And, I mean, should people watch it since it's close to Halloween just for something to do? No, watch the original. (laughs) Watch the original. The original is better. I mean, if you're into Hellraiser and you want to see, like, so I would say it's half okay. Okay. Because the Cenobites, which are the, um, I'm not even sure if they're demons or if they're aliens or they're creatures or whatever. They don't really explain and I didn't look into it. Okay. But they're very good and the acting of those actors did really good. The outfits are costumes and the makeup is decent. Right. That's the best part of the film. Okay. The main storyline, the main characters, the main actors, terrible acting. Really? Boring story. <laughs> it is just What a atrocious. waste of time. Yeah, it was, and it's two hours. Oh my gosh. See, this is why I don't watch movies, Matt. 
<laughs> because it's too long? You'd rather be out? I don't want to waste my time. Well, okay, okay. You do know you can drink while you're watching movies, right? <laughs> oh, I didn't know that, Matt. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh my See, gosh. that's why I'm here. Okay. I'm here to help. Thank you. So how many beer mugs are you going to give it, Matt? Uh, well, you know, I still go with the reels, <laughs> but uh, it, it's two and a half. Oh, really? And that's being generous. Two and a half out of five. Yeah. Yeah. So you're giving it a basic C. No, it's a 50%. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. an F. So that's an F. All right. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Let's give your mother a call and see what Ma Henshaw. And she did actually watch it. Yes. Uh, thanks about Hellraiser on Magic 99.1. Calling Ma Hinshaw this morning on Magic 99.1. What are you calling her? Ma Hinshaw. Oh, I just okay. said it. Okay, got it. Hello. Good morning, Ma Hinshaw. Lisa and Matt calling on Magic. How are you? I'm a little chilly here in Sierra Vista. Oh, Burr. what's the temperature there? Oh, 55. Oh, wow. Yeah, let me see where we are here. It's 61 here, so you beat us. But with the, Oh, my uh, gosh. With the, yes, with the cold. we did. Yes. Well, well, fall has fell, so happy fall, Ma Henshaw. It's time to talk about Hellraiser, the movie. You really saw that movie, huh? Not the whole thing. <laughs> no? I quit halfway through. I said, this is it. I can't take it anymore. And it's the first time I've done that. Really? Okay. Was it the blood, guts, and gore, the torture? What was it that made you stop, Ma? No, it was the bad acting. <laughs> it started out horrible. They did sound like horrible bad porn stars or something. <laughs> there was uh, inappropriate nudity, R-rated movie, but... There's no nudity. Uh, what are you talking good. about? Yeah, I mean, what what is inappropriate nudity? Well, they they two different scenes uh, in the first half hour. They were fooling around. Okay, so it was just not necessary. But it didn't show anything. No. No. Well, the guy's backside. <laughs> and you're complaining about that. <laughs> Usually you like that, Ma. It, it, you know, it's because it's not Jason Momoa. Oh, that's why. Right. That's you why. got it. That's why. Nobody can compare. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait to see how many cookies you give it, or if you even can give it cookies since you didn't finish it. <laughs> well, I can, I can give it cookies for the part that I stood to go through. I'll give it a one. A one. <laughs> Wow, wow, that's the lowest ever on this show. Well, from her, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I don't think you've ever given a film a one, ever. Uh, I've come pretty close. Yeah, but never <laughs> a one. Wow, that is unbelievable. You know what? Just the name makes me say no thank you. I agree with that. Yeah. So anyone, danger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. So what are we going to review next week? So next week, we're going to the theaters. Okay. It is the end of the most recent Halloween trilogy. It is Hocus Halloween Pocus. Ends. No. Oh. Not Hocus Pocus 2. I've heard that <laughs> movie is awful, by the way. Oh, that's too bad. I haven't seen it. It's on Disney+. Plus. It's streaming on Disney+. Plus. But right. no, Halloween, Halloween Ends. Ha uh -oh. Halloween what? 24? Halloween, yeah. What number is this? Do you know? I don't know. No, probably. They just call it Halloween Ends. So they redid, I, I, it's not really a reboot. They're calling it a sequel to the very original film, and it started in 2018, and they did a trilogy. Okay. So they had the first film released in 2018, and then the next one was supposed to come out in 2020, but it was COVID. Right. So they re released it last year in 2021, and then this is the end of that trilogy in 2022. Okay. And how were the first two? They're okay. They're all right. Not like... Incredible, but are you expecting they're, they're a decent. lot from this one? No, no, <laughs> I'm not personally. I'm not, but we'll see. Uh, I'm so glad I have the two of you to review the movies for me. Yeah, so oh, go you know see what? Lyle, Lyle Crocodile. I went and saw that one, and uh, it was cute. Oh, I bet it was. How many cookies you given that, Ma? Oh, gee, maybe a four. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. That's a better choice. Thank you, Matt and Ma Hinshaw. Be sure to check out the podcast. It's called The Real Film Nerds, and you can catch them here every, well, sometimes Mondays, Most sometimes Wednesdays. Mondays. On yeah. Mondays. On what station, you guys? 99.1 Magic. She still says it backwards. She does not. It's Magic 99.1. It can go either oh, way. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. <laughs> <laughs>